Hello everyone, I am Francis Villafana and welcome to another episode of our Quarantine Devotionals of the Port of Spain Church of Christ. Today I'm going to speak a little bit on the topic of unity, a topic I believe that is important to us all. In Ephesians 4, reading from verses 1 to 5, and I'm reading from the NASB version, Paul says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called, in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. You know, I get the impression that God wants us to be unified in this passage. And what is unity? Unity is the quality or state of being one. You know, this passage tells me that God has an amazing vision for His church. A vision of perfect unity amongst the body of believers. In verse 3, he commands us to be diligent, to preserve or keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And diligence simply means to, to work hard, to be meticulous, to be conscious, to be thorough. He did not say to go and invent or develop or create that unity, but simply to preserve it. You know, God was interested in a church whose unity perfectly reflects His glory. A church whose unity perfectly reflects their gratitude for His grace. A church whose unity perfectly reflects the unity between the Father and His Son. As Christians, I believe that we must embrace God's vision of this perfect unity He has for us. His church. His church must exist in an environment of love, an environment of peace. We should always be passionate for His glory to be displayed amongst us. We must remember that the price of our unity was the blood of Jesus. That was the price that was paid for us. We must remember as well that we are no longer a group of individuals who get together, who gather together for worship. But we are a spiritual family, united through the Spirit of Christ. As Christians, I believe that we have more oneness in common than we are sometimes conscious of. We are part of one body. We have that one Spirit within us. We have that one hope of heaven. We have the one Lord, the one faith in the Word, the one baptism, the one God to whom we all submit. You know, having done all of this for us, to unite us with Himself and with each other, we are now called to keep or to preserve this unity within the church. But how can this unity be preserved? Reading from verse 1 again, Paul says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Therefore, implying that something came before. And as a Gentile church, you know, he wanted them to understand how much or how privileged they were to be a part of God's plan of salvation. How privileged they were to now be united with the Jews. How privileged they were now to be considered the people of God. You know, 
Paul says, therefore, in view of the benefit you now have in Christ, I implore you to walk worthily. In view of this benefit that you have, that if you are in any way grateful for what you have in Christ, that you should walk worthily in His presence. You know, walking is frequently used in the New Testament as a designation of the Christian's total behavior pattern. To walk worthily is therefore to exhibit the kind of life that would bring honor to Jesus. You know, God is looking to you and me to display the kind of life that would bring glory and honor to Jesus in the church. Not according to the sinful nature which brings disunity, but according to His Spirit, which helps us to preserve the unity of the church. This means that our character must continue to change, and we must continue to grow in order to preserve this unity that God has given us. You know, when tempted to, to be proud, we must, we must put that pride to death, through humility because humility finds a way to say I forgive you to say I'm sorry to say I am still teachable to acknowledge when I'm going wrong to be kind instead of harsh to be patient instead of impatient you know it's not going to be easy but very much possible that is why God calls us to be diligent, to work hard, to be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit. And as I close, I read for you John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. He says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Thank you very much all. Do have a good day and may God richly bless you.